Now that it's been a little over a week since the last round of changes, we have a much better idea of how the meta is shaping out. It's fair to say a lot of our predictions from our last tier list have played out as we expected, but inevitably there are also a ton of new trends to discuss that we did not originally expect. So with the help of our rank one consultants and analyzing the most recent data, we're set to bring you the consolidated tier list for patch 10.1 after the June 5th hotfixes. But before we get into it, we have an announcement. For a limited time, anybody who signs up to our annual Infinity Plus service before June 18th will be able to submit their gameplay to be reviewed by rank one gladiators. Not only that, but you'll also be provided with an additional free of charge VOD review every month for the duration of your annual sub. Last season, we at Skillcapped helped thousands of PvPers hit their rating goals from challenger all the way up to rank one and these vod reviews are proven to be one of the best assets to fast track your improvement in arena and go hand in hand with our pvp courses and epic class guides to provide you with the greatest learning experience the market has to offer wondering if it's really worth it well we're so confident in our service that we're the only place that guarantees you will gain at least 400 rating while using our website if you don't you get your money back no questions asked so what's there to lose be sure to click the sign up link in the description below to be able to benefit from this limited time offer starting off the first melee we want to highlight is enhancement shaman who as predicted is still doing very well for themselves even after the hot fixes previously enhancement had two equally competitive builds one of which is a more lava lash centric variation revolving around talents like Hot Hand and Ashen Catalyst. Well, after the hotfixes and nerfs to Ashen Catalyst, the majority of enhancement players are now opting for the more standard Storm Strike focused build, which has now arguably gotten even stronger, as although the peak of burst damage has been toned down, passive damage has risen substantially. And even despite the nerfs, enhancement shamans during cooldowns are still more than capable of soloing even the tankiest of players if the stars align. Not to mention, in a caster dominated meta like the one we currently reside in, enhancement is, as we mentioned in the last video, almost a necessary justice making them without a doubt one of the strongest melees for solo shuffle right now, and as a result, we'll be keeping them in our A plus tier. Rogue players are going to disagree with us on this one, but after receiving what seemed like on paper quite a big blow in the latest round of tuning, they're still doing just fine, who would have guessed? Last update, we saw changes to Flagellation, Dark Shadow, Weapon Master, and most importantly, a rather hefty nerf to Secret Technique. In our last video, we predicted that the one-shot build focused around Flagellation would become far less popular, and we were right, as now it's almost non-existent. That being said, again, like we expected, the standard build and playstyle remain for the most part exactly the same, still being heavily focused around that synergy between the Rotten and the two-piece tier set. Granted though, due to the changes, burst damage was still substantially toned down as a whole, but it's fair to say it was drastically overtuned previously. Meaning all that's really happened is that instead of doing two health bars worth of damage in a single shadow dance, it's now only one. Historically, subtlety has always required two scenarios to work well. Number one is that they need to be capable of killing inside of a shadow dance, which we know they definitely still are. The second is that the meta needs to fit them. For example, in a melee heavy lobby, sub can often be heavily victimized and unable to play the game. Currently, the meta is very fitting, as subtlety are not only very strong against casters from a damage standpoint, but also can survive far better, while simultaneously having a lot of agency in most lobbies due to naturally preferring casters as their partners. More than likely, unless we see even more nerfs to subtlety, it's going to take a drastic shift in the meta to knock them off the top spot, so we're happy with our predicted placement of A plus for sub rogue. One melee we were very wrong about though was Arms Warrior. In the hotfixes, they received an overall 4% damage buff alongside further increases to both rend and deep wounds. This paired with all the nerfs to some of the more dominant casters in solo shuffle had us predicting the meta to possibly sway towards something more melee friendly, where given their toolkit and playstyle, Arms would be able to have more of an impact on the game and thus perform a lot better in solo shuffle. Well, this definitely wasn't the case. Now, don't get us wrong, we by no means think Arms Warriors are a bad spec per se, but rather, ever since the nerfs targeted towards their burst damage, and especially to Sharpen Blade and Skull Splitter, Arms Warriors are required to rely far too much on their constant pressure. Which is hard to maintain in a caster dominated meta, where you're not only fighting a losing battle for trying to maintain uptime, but also can't really stay out in the open for extended periods in heavy caster lobbies, making your success heavily reliant on the mercy of the lobby at hand. Due to this, we're going to be moving Arms Warriors back down half a tier to our A tier. 
Taking a look at our completed melee tier list, overall balance is looking surprisingly good, especially now since the slight tuning to enhancement and subtlety rogue means there isn't really any standout melee right now. So still in our A plus tier, alongside enhance and sub, we've got Retribution Paladin, Havoc, and Survival Hunter. Survival, while by no means booming in representation, remains a solid spec and arguably the best for hunters as a whole right now. That being said, it does come with a very high skill floor. In order to be successful and perform well, you're going to be tasked with finding that perfect balance in weaving in and out of danger and playing around your freezing trap windows to exert pressure. Whereas Retribution Paladin continues to be our low rated recommendation. Although they're almost non-existent at the highest of rating thresholds, they require opponents to play perfectly defensively in order to survive their burst damage, something that just doesn't happen at lower ratings. Moving down now, keep in mind that these specs are only half a tier off those at the top of this list, which speaks volumes to just how close the overall game balance is right now. One to watch in this tier are Feral Druids, who have now become the best performing melee above 2400 in Shuffle on the European servers. But this doesn't translate very well across both regions, nor does it at the lower ranks. So for the average Joe right now, there are far better options. Assassination, as we predicted, despite getting that 5% buff, is still slightly weaker in Shuffle as a whole compared to Subtlety, especially when coming up against casters. Then both Fury and Arms are also finding themselves in our A tier, being relatively equal in strength. Although, for the large majority of players, Fury remains the preferred option for dealing with casters right now thanks to its single target pressure combined with Slaughterhouse, seeing the bottom of the tier list makes us sad. Not a single person can deny that both the Unholy and Frost Death Knights are in need of some immediate love right now. A caster dominated meta would have once meant DK's thriving, but with a complete redesign of Spell Warden, they have become and continue to be an anti magic shell of their former selves. Who knows, maybe when they fix the MMR, we'll also see some Death Knight changes. And of course, joining them at the bottom is Outlaw Rogue, who honestly may as well not exist for players until both Sub and Asa get nerfed a few times. With melee covered, let's move on to the range side of things. Starting off with a caster that's climbed massively in popularity over the last week, despite even receiving nerfs to Amplify Curse, Legion Strike, and Inquisitor's Gaze, Warlocks are similar to Rogues in the sense that no matter what you do to the most dominant spec at the time, they've always got another spec in their pocket that ends up being equally as strong, and Demonology has been sitting there waiting for Destruction's reign to be over. Demonology right now is the full package, bringing an abundance of sustained passive damage coupled with that immense burst from Demonic Tyrant. And due to its inherent durability and tankiness as a whole, Demonology is able to survive and perform incredibly well no matter what the lobby throws at you. Despite losing their interrupt with patch 10.1, Demonology still continues to be one of the most obnoxious and disruptive casters to face in arenas, where the combination of Mortal Coil, Fear Spam, and Axe Toss allows you to exert that sustained pressure further. Something else that's pushed Demonology into the forefront of the meta right now is that every week that goes by, more and more players gain access to tier sets, and the Demonology tier set is up there with the best of them, providing a passive boost to Demon Bolt and also reducing the cooldown of Grimoire Felguard after consuming any demonic core procs. So not only are you going to have more stuns, but also, thanks to the 4 set, the Felguard itself will also be doing 40% additional damage in addition to buffing all of your other pets damage by 20% for its duration. Out with the old, in with the new. We'll be moving Demonology up from A plus to S tier with this update. Also climbing up a rank this week, we've got Elemental Shaman. Elementals have been on the cusp of our highest tier for a few weeks now, and thanks to the nerfs to some of the stronger casters, Elementals have gained a lot of traction. Elemental Shamans akin to Season 1, despite the changes, still opt for a build focused entirely around high consistent pressure, dropping things like Stormkeeper, which is now granted by their 2 set, in return for additional Maelstrom and Flame Shock damage. Like always, Elementals tend to thrive in caster metas, where they're able to maximize their abundance of instant cast damage in conjunction with being incredibly disruptive due to the short cooldown of Wind Shear, coupled with Grounding Totem. What's often kept them on a leash has been rogues, but as we all know, this season finally gave them access to a much needed additional defensive in the form of Burrow, which has proven to greatly aid their survivability this season. All that aside, it's not only other casters getting worse that have caused Elemental to see a resurgence. The way Elemental works is that the more flame shocks you can have out and maintain, the more damage you're going to be doing. So when a spec that just so happens to have infinite pets active throughout the game, like a Demonology Warlock, suddenly becomes the go-to spec, you can see why Elementals this week might be naturally seeing quite a rise in their overall performance. For these reasons, we're going to be moving Elemental Shamans up from the A-plus tier to our highest tier, S. 
The one caster that survived the onslaught of nerfs was, as we predicted, Balance Druid. After receiving nerfs to Astral Power Generation, Star Surge Burst, and an incredibly minor nerf to Alkin Adept, the only real impactful one was the reduction in damage on Goldrin's Fang. The major effects of these changes have pushed Druids away from the previously AoE-focused build, picking up talents like Star Weaver and Star Burst, and primarily using Starfall for their main damage source. Now though, what's being played is almost exclusively a more single target oriented build that players were still playing and finding success with even before these changes. As a whole, the spec continues to have a ton of agency over any solo shuffle lobby and the ability to almost always close out games with the second incarnation. So it goes without saying that we'll of course be keeping balanced druids at the top spot for another week. The range tier list looks slightly different from our initial predictions, and at the top spot we've got Balanced Druids, who are now joined by Elemental Shamans and Demonology Warlocks. Looking at our A plus tier, Destruction Warlock players have definitely been noticing the damage nerf. Previously, it was by far the best spec in the game. Now though, it's much more reliant on having to secure casts to do well, which leaves much more room for counterplay. Fire Mage continues to be a dominant force in caster heavy lobbies, despite the nerfs to both Flame Cannon and Glass Cannon, but realistically nerfs to survivability on a class you can't even hit because they're on the other side of the map are not too impactful. Jokes aside, Fire Mages can still struggle into primarily melee caster comps when focused. One spec we'll be moving back down after our predictions last week is Beast Mastery Hunter, who even despite a 5% damage increase, is just not up to par with the higher ranked range on this list. The same goes for both Marksmanship and Affliction, who again received some minor changes in this most recent round of hotfixes. Both do seem to be performing slightly better than expected, but even then, they are still not performing well enough to justify climbing any higher. Finally, in our ranged graveyard, we've still got both Devastation and Arcane Mage. Devastation Evoker, although able to have a very big impact on the game in specific compositions, continues to be lacking in solo shuffle when compared to the level of some of the stronger casters in the meta right now. Finally, let's wrap things up on the healer side of things, where we have quite some movements in the tiers. One of which is Preservation of Ochre. Much like with our ranged list, it's often the case that when the clearly dominant specs get nerfed, we see new specs rise up the ranks. Evoker has been on the cusp of being strong, but after the loss of their Season 1 tier set, it's often been the case that they can run out of healing and don't really bring as much as they once did on the damage front. Well, now that tier sets are, as we mentioned, becoming a lot more common, Preservation are once again finding its footing in the meta. The main focal point here is the two-piece, which in addition to buffing Dream Breath, one of Preservation's strongest heals as a whole, also attaches a healing over time effect to Spirit Bloom, providing a huge buff to healing in general. Not to mention, the recent buff to Disintegrate has also helped with some of that missing offensive prowess, turning Evokers into what can only be described as the jack-of-all-trades healer right now providing good throughput, good utility, good cooldowns, and even some necessary tools to recover when behind, all while being very mana efficient. We're going to be moving Preservation up one tier from A to A+, for this update. Also being targeted in the recent hotfixes were the reigning healing kings, Mistweaver Monks. To refresh your memory, Mistweaver received some big nerfs primarily targeted at their mana efficiency with a three-pronged attack, reducing the effectiveness of their tier set Soul Fang Infusion. Apparently, at the start of the week, this was mistakenly buffed instead of nerfed, but now it's been resolved and was nerfed as expected. In addition, one very impactful change was attaching a mana cost to Zen Spheres, which makes not only swapping the orbs far more of a decision, but now also comes at a hefty mana cost. Then, to top it all off, Mistweaver received a flat-out 5% nerf to mana regeneration as a whole. Our initial thinking was that these changes wouldn't have too much of an impact on most solo shuffle games, simply due to how quick games tend to be. That being said, it definitely comes up more than you would first imagine, now posing a very viable win condition and edge for other healers. For this reason, we believe Mistweavers are no longer the undisputed best healer and are way more in line with the rest of the pack, so we will be dropping them from S tier to A+. For our finalized healer tier list, we have Restoration Shaman and Restoration Druid, now joined by Mistweaver, who dropped down, and Evoker, who climbed up one tier. Overall, the balance between these four healers is very good, with each of them having their own niches, as well as very clear strengths and weaknesses, depending on the lobby and other healers you'll be facing. Slightly below, we've got Disciplined Priest, who despite their early season dominance, were hit very hard by the nerf to Power Word Shield, cutting their healing substantially. Disciplined Priests, however, still do very well in Solo Shuffle with their abundance of defensive cooldowns to rotate through, which has a big impact, especially on the lower end of ratings. As a result of the shakeup in this list, we're also going to be moving Holy Priest down to B+. While getting no direct changes, we deem it unfair to have both Holy and Discipline on the same tier when there is a clear discrepancy between the two. 
Also joining Holy Priest in our B plus tier are Fist Weavers. Again, we figured it was unfair to have them on the same tier as Holy Paladin, who's objectively the worst healer by a long distance. Fist Weavers can be very lobby dependent, but now definitely require a lot more skill in order to pull off effectively, rather than something you can just blindly play into any matchup. And of course, right at the bottom of our list, we've got the Holy Paladins. There's not much to say here, other than that hopefully they'll end up getting some love before the end of the season. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then go to skillcap.com. In addition to all of our amazing content, for a limited time only, anyone who signs up for our annual service before June 18th will be able to submit their gameplay to be reviewed by Rank 1 Gladiators. Not only that, but you'll also be provided with an additional free-of-charge VOD review every month for the duration of your annual sub. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. So there you have it everyone, a complete look at the solo shuffle tier list for patch 10.1. Thank you all so much for watching, have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.